Have you ever seen someone yawn and then all of a sudden you had to yawn too? Or if someone starts to laugh, especially if you're trying to be quiet, sometimes you can catch the giggles. This is called empathy, and empathy is the first step of compassion. This summer at Vacation Bible School, we're going to explore what it means to have compassion for others, for ourselves, and for the world. There are two options for how you can participate. You can do virtual VBS the week of June 13th, or in-person VBS beginning on Sunday, June 20th. Every session is built around interactive elements, such as movement, create and play, Bible story, and compassion and action. So for more information, to register or to sign up as a volunteer, follow the link below. I hope that you can join us for Compassion Camp this June. Jesus said that where two or three are gathered in my name, surely I am with them. Today, I am grateful to be gathered in worship with you and to celebrate Pentecost. You can find a link to the bulletin that includes um, the prayers, responsive readings, announcements, and music. While you're in the comments section, take a moment to greet others and add a one word description to tell us how your week has been. If you have a prayer request, please add that to the comments section. And if you want to learn more about New Providence Presbyterian or talk to a pastor, type connect in the comments section. One of us will reach out to you after the service. This past Tuesday, the session of the church met and decided that we will continue to follow our current COVID protocols, which include wearing masks and social distancing while in the building. During this past year, I have been surprised at the generosity of this congregation during such uncertain times. But because of your commitment to New Providence, we've been able to continue our mission commitments and our ministry work. If you'd like to give today, there will be a link later in the service, and you are always welcome to mail in your pledge or donation directly to the church office. Let us gather for worship. God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The elders shall dream dreams. Both men and women shall prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, for out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. O oh God, as your spirit filled the church on the first Pentecost day, so fill this place with your presence and fill us with your passion. You are doing a new thing, actively moving in the world. Forgive us when we act as if your stories have all been written. You hear, hear the prayers of every language and call us to hear each other. Forgive us when we act as if your spirit only spoke our native tongue. Wash us in your grace, O God, and illumine us with your fire. Send us out to follow your spirit and teach us to hear the prayers of all your people. Through Christ, the Holy Spirit has poured out upon us grace for the forgiveness of our sins. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we can begin again, because in Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Hello, friends. I'm so glad to see you this morning. I want to tell you about some friends of mine, and maybe you have friends like this, too. My friends are very organized, and they like to have everything in the right place and in the same place it's always been, and they're very organized about it. If you go look in their closet, this will be the place where the blue jeans go, and this might be the place where the sweatshirts go, and this might be the place where their t-shirts go, and then down on the floor there will be a place for brown shoes, and a place for tennis shoes, and a place for sandals, and everything has to be in the right place. I'm not so much like that, but some of my friends are. You may know Amelia, who works at our welcome table. She keeps telling me she wants to come to my house and rearrange my kitchen, because she says it's not organized the right way. But it's okay for me. In just a minute, Rachel's going to read a story to us about the church and some of Jesus' followers after Jesus had gone to heaven, that some of them were together, but they felt like they all needed to be separated into their own groups. And so I found these pieces of colored paper, and some of them thought, we should keep all the yellow people together and all the blue people together and all the orange people together and all the pink people together, and we should all stay in our own groups. And so in Jerusalem, all the Jews were staying with other Jewish people, and all the Egyptians were staying with other Egyptian people, and all the people from Parthia, wherever that is, were staying with other Parthian people, and they were all in their same groups, in their own separate groups. And one day, the Holy Spirit came along, and the, the Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, says it was like a mighty wind that blew through Jerusalem. And all of them started to hear things in other languages that they didn't speak. The Spirit came through and blew everything around, and it knocked people out of their little separate groups, and it put everybody into the church together. So I brought this fan to show you what that big wind might look like. Now, what do you think will happen with my little pieces of paper when the wind gets it? Do you think they'll all stay in their own groups? Let's try it. Oh, whoa. Wow. You can't see on the floor, but it's all mixed up. Everybody's all together, all the different colors. And I think there's a message there for us that I think God wants us to learn that we shouldn't just have to stay with people who are just like us. Maybe you have some friends from your school who speak a different language, or maybe their skin is a different color, or maybe they live in a place where you, have lived in a place where you've never been. 
That's a good thing, God says. We should all be together. We should all be mixed up and mingling with one another. So I hope you'll remember that on this Pentecost day that we give thanks for all the ways that God mixes us up and brings us all together. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for the mighty wind at Pentecost and the way it blows us all around and shakes things up and makes us different and makes us better. Help us to look for differences in one another and be grateful for those. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, friends. Good to see you. Let us pray. Spirit of God, wake us up so that we may see and hear you in our midst. The scripture lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Listen for a word from God. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they all met in one room. And suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now where there were devout people living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled, but they were bewildered to hear their native languages being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely all of these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears these words in our native tongue? We are Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome. All Jews are converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. We hear them preaching each in our own language about the marvels of God. All were amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they've drunk too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd. People of Judea and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you think. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel spoke of. In the days to come, it is our God who speaks. I will pour out my spirit on all humankind. Your daughters and sons will prophesy. Your young people will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even on the most insignificant of my people, both women and men, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. And I will display wonders in heaven above and signs on earth below. Blood, fire, billowing smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon will become blood. Before the coming of the great and sublime days of our God, all who call upon the name of our God will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I began preparing for this worship service, I found myself laughing at how some of the hymns describe the Holy Spirit, like the murmur of a dove song, or one of my favorites, Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. But looking at those hymns next to this scripture text, we can't possibly be talking about the same thing. It sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven, tongues of fire, wonders in heaven above and earth below, blood, fire, billowing smoke, the moon turned to blood. This does not sound like a spirit of gentleness to me. It actually reminds me of how other characters talk about Aslan in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. 
Aslan is a lion, but he's also the figure representative of God in the books. Miss Beaver answers the children's questions about him. She says, safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he is good. Or later, it's not as if he were a tame lion. This wild and untamable spirit of God is what is at work in the scripture text today. The followers of Jesus have just been through a difficult time. They had followed Jesus into Jerusalem, watched him suffer and die. All of his hopes were lost, and then the resurrected Christ started showing up at their dinner table. Behind locked doors, along distant roads, just as the disciples started to wrap their head around this new understanding of who Jesus is and what it means to follow him, he ascends right on up to heaven. And this wild wind of fire blows into their midst. And they begin to speak in languages they have never heard. Not a tame lion indeed. And this actually reminds me of what it's kind of been like in our lives over the last year. The whiplash of change we've all experienced trying to wrap our heads around what this means for us. Even the latest good news from the CDC seems to make things more complicated than simple. Just like on the original day of Pentecost, we find ourselves trying to figure out what this good news means for us. Emily took a class a few weeks ago to learn more about the church we are becoming in this new era, called the Hybrid Church. I may have borrowed her notes. It talks about how this church doesn't live in a building, it lives in homes. It lives online as well as in the sacred spaces that we like together. But one of my favorite statistics I saw was this. 70% of adults say that I am spiritually growing during this pandemic in ways other than church attendance. So I wonder, how have you been growing spiritually? That's not a rhetorical question. I actually want you to answer that and put it in the comment section or shoot me an email. Because I have found this true for myself and my family over the last year. When lockdown first began, it felt like a sigh of relief for me because our life had become so busy and frazzled. Yes, there have been many hard days and hard choices, but just as many gifts. The gift of more time together, learning how to slow down, having the time to do spiritual formation with my children, playing in the rocks with them. Several folks mentioned to us that they thought it was wild to relocate and start new work in the middle of a pandemic. But I know many folks who've done the same thing. This pandemic has forced us to recalibrate our lives and re-examine our priorities. I am beyond grateful to the slower life that we have built. And even with things turning to a new normal, I don't want to go back to that frantic pace. Much of in-person life is returning, but we should still hold on to those ways we were growing spiritually during the pandemic. But returning is often harder than going. When I was in school, I had the opportunity to study abroad two different times. In college, I spent a semester at the University of Westminster in London, and in seminary, a summer doing supervised ministry in rural Kenya. Both times, I found that the return culture shock was harder than the one going, but even more so when I got back from Kenya. In Kenya, I was in a place where there was almost nobody who looked like me. Like I literally made small children cry because they'd never seen someone like me, especially someone with giant red curly hair. And on my way home from Kenya, I had the opportunity to spend a day, I had about a 12 hour layover in London. Walking around this place that I had enjoyed in college, things looked different. You know, in London, there's a lot of famous statues of lions. But after a summer in Kenya, I was reminded starkly that lions do not live naturally in the United Kingdom. 
It was this moment of dislocation and confusion, remnants of colonialism, but a stark, a stark one to wrap my head around. And we're all going through this reverse culture shock again as we come home. Experts are beginning to describe some of the ways this pandemic has shifted our experiences and expectations of life. Like remote work and Zoom have mu become much more acceptable. Even talking about and making a priority to take care of our own mental health has become more accepted. We're even beginning to ask each other a lot more often the question, what's your comfort level with this gathering and how we're coming together? And in reality, much of our former life was what was really abnormal. The crazy pace, the inequities, and the injustices. I listened to a great NPR story about how to human again. And the physician on the show said this, I think when you're dealing with a crisis like this, you can have post-traumatic stress. And we all will at some level, but there's also something called post-traumatic growth. I think there are moments in our lifetime, and this is one of them, when we can really think hard and think big about what the future should look like. There's a lot that we should let go of and a lot that we can improve on. Now, I don't want to polyamma this pandemic. I'm not saying that it was worth it for these things to happen, but I firmly believe and I have seen that God can bring new life out of even the darkest valleys. Even though we want to return to in-person worship, we've learned the benefits of gathering in new ways. I know that parents and kids can sometimes listen more. I enjoy hearing sermons from different friends and pastors around the globe. So what have you found to be a benefit of being able to worship in this way? Put that in the chat box. Send me an email, I want to know. In some ways, it's more authentic. Definitely not polished and perfect, especially when we are worshiping in our pajamas, but powerful and real all the same. This untamable Holy Spirit is an expert at making the impossible things become possible. We used to say you can't possibly have a presbytery meeting over Zoom, but now we do it regularly. We say it's impossible to work from home while your children are doing school, but so many folks have figured out how to make it happen. We say it's impossible. Children cannot keep um, distance when they're at school and wear masks on, but teachers have figured out how to do it. It's impossible for them to come up with a new vaccine in less than a year, but now there are three. So what other things that we think now are impossible that the Holy Spirit is just waiting to shake up? Is it that our political vi divide is too rigid and set in stone that we'll never be able to find a way forward together? Is it that the conflict in the Holy Land with Israel and Palestine has been going on forever and there's never going to be an end? I feel like the Holy Spirit just takes those kinds of things as a challenge. You think that's impossible? Just wait to see what I've got in store. And this text also gives us some really specific ways to lean into this new and emerging world. It says, I will pour out my spirit on all of humankind. Your daughters and sons will prophesy, your young people will see visions, and your elders will dream dreams. So in this new season, in our new time of culture shock and coming back together and finding new ways to connect, I invite you to listen and speak in new ways. The people around us are having visions and dreaming dreams, and we need to hear what they have to say. And I want to invite you to dream dreams. What are the things that you've hoped for and you've longed for that you didn't quite think were possible? What are the ways that you've wanted to see and know Christ and see how the God is impacting the world around us? Maybe it's time for you to dream those dreams. But either way, give yourself permission to hope for what can't be because 
I hate to tell you this, that once you've invited the Holy Spirit into your lives, it's going to shake you up, whether you like it or not. But the good news is that God is inviting us to this abundant life together. Let's listen and speak. Let's dream dreams so that we can pay attention to all of the ways that God's kingdom is breaking forth among us. Amen. As we take time to consider the ways in which we can give to God this week, we are also asked to consider an additional offering that we collect today. Each year on Pentecost, the Presbyterian Church USA collects a special offering to assist our denomination's efforts in providing opportunities for young people to grow and share their faith in Christ. The Pentecost offering is spread across four different areas. 40% of the offering will stay here in Blount County and be given to organizations that positively impact the lives of youth and children here in our community. Another 25% will go to the Young Adult Volunteers Program, which provides opportunities for young adults to live and serve for a year in communities around the world. Another 25% will go to the Ministries with Youth in our denomination, which includes our Youth Triennium. Triennium is the largest gathering of youth in our denomination, and preparations are currently being made for the summer of 2022 in Indianapolis. The final 10% of the offering goes to our denomination's initiatives, which seek to improve education and provide safe spaces for at-risk children. If you are interested in taking part in this special offering, just make sure you provide a note with your offering that indicates it is for the Pentecost offering. If you donate online, we just ask that you send an email to Penny to let her know how much of your offering you would like to allocate to the special offering. Reverend Sarah R. offers us these words of invitation. Friends, if all you give is yourself, I believe God's heart will be full. However, if you are able to give another offering of some sort, and if it is able to impact another, providing worship that comforts them, food that feeds them, or relationships that nurture them, then perhaps God's heart might overflow. Let us bring our gifts to God this morning. Please join us in singing, Come to the Table of Grace. Blessed are you who hunger for justice, 
for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who thirst for righteousness, for you will drink deeply from the cup of joy. Blessed are you who yearn for reconciliation, for you will find peace. And blessed are we, for Christ calls us to this table where there is room for everyone and all are invited. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you and, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks and, and praise. It is always good that we give you thanks, O God, for you sent your Holy Spirit into our midst, the spirit of wisdom and might, who brings us into communion with you and with one another. And so with all the people of God in every age, we praise you for the power of the resurrection to set us free from divisions and strife. We praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, by whose word all things came into being, whose power brings the dead to life, whose breath undergirds our prayers, and whose love for rich diversity amazes and astonishes your people. Blessed are you, O Christ, word made flesh, who came to us as a prophet, a brother, and savior. We thank you for your life among us, preaching, feeding, healing, and calling the powerful to righteousness. Remembering our Lord's commandment to know him, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Blessed are you, O Spirit, poured out upon your people to open our hearts, to pray within us, to teach us hope. Though this broken bread show us life abundant, break us as well, so that with your gifts we may tend your earth and feed the hungry, giving thanks for all that nourishes this blessed creation, now and forever. Amen. On the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. And taking a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he gave it to them. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. Blood shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And every time, you eat this bread and you drink this cup. You proclaim the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. The feast of God for the people of God. The bread of heaven. The cup of new life. Thanks be to God. Rachel, the body of Christ given for you blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Join us in singing, You Shall Go Out With Joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. 
The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. Shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. Friends, go out into the world and labor to bring forth the new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who adhere. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming, and may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.